Hey, what's going on guys? It's Nick from Nick's Crypto Investments. Welcome back to yet another video. Today's video is going to be on Kubo, uh, Kubo Money. Um, I've done a video on them in the past uh, when they were out for about a week, I believe. Um, I'm going to be doing a follow-up video now um, because I truly believe that this is a strong node protocol. Uh, Cube, Cubo protocol is run by Bruno. Uh, I touched over this in the last video, so I'm going to leave a link down below. This is going to be strictly for updates, see what's coming, and how the price action is going, and just pretty much how this first month has been, and if now is too late to buy in. If you guys are new here, make sure you go down below, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, so you guys can stay up to date on all of my latest videos. As always, I like to start on the Discord and kind of just go over the bits and pieces that are pretty important in the announcements and share them to you guys just in case you guys are not in the Discord. So first of all, on the 22nd of February, today is March 3rd, or 2nd, I'm sorry, March 2nd, uh, we saw that they got in on listed on CoinGecko and CoinMarketCap. That obviously brought in some attention as well. Uh, a lot of people search on CoinGecko and CoinMarketCap for the biggest gainers and what's new projects that are being listed and whatever have you. So this was pretty good marketing and this way everyone can keep track. They can click on the market tab, see where the liquidity is, etc. Next, they started doing Medium articles. I think this is a great way to get back out to your community. Um... You know, have something for them to read. They don't have to go through the announcements or check Twitter and whatever have you. So I think it's great that they incorporated Medium articles into a way of kind of just communicating uh, with the community. They also had a treasury investment. Uh, currently, we have 80% liquidity pools, 10% strong nodes, 10% parked in uh, day um, or da or however you say it. <laughs> um, I have that pulled up. So we'll, we'll touch on that in a little bit. Uh, and they also have a treasury, the treasury uh, medium article, which I have pulled up as well. So we're going to touch on that. Those are the two biggest things. So we kind of want to see what's going on with the treasury now that the treasury is finally uh, built up to where they can start investing. And what are their plans with the treasury? And is this going to help the protocol? That's obviously extremely important. So with all that being said, let's jump over to uh, Bruno or Bruno Cubed 3. Uh, which is pretty much cubed. <laughs> so I, I love that name, actually. Um, he pretty much put out uh, an, on the 28th of February a pretty cool tweet, very short, simple, to the point, what's coming to Cubo soon, right? So V3, version 3 of the contract. So he's constantly innovating, right? So Bruno is the developer of Cubo. V3 of the contract for smoother reward payments. I like that. Everyone wants to get paid. Everyone wants their passive income. And everyone wants it smoothly, correctly, and done in a timely manner. Right? Everyone loves that. So I think that's great. I love how they're constantly updating the contract. Brand new design and UI. I think the design is pretty good. But, you know, it could always be updated. And I like that they're, you know, touching base on that um, with trying to... Always constantly upgrade, you know, I, I believe a lot of people kind of like in your head, it's kind of like human nature. If something looks nice, you feel better investing in it or you feel better looking at it. You feel, you know, you just feel more confident, right? So I think having a sleek UI design is perfect and I think it might attract a lot of investors. Uh, that's my personal two cents. Remember, nothing I say is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a CPA. I bring you guys these videos for in entertainment and informational videos only, right? That's that's the only purpose of my videos. I just want to bring to you what I believe is a decent project or a good project. And if I don't think it's a good project, I might make a video on it and be completely open and transparent about that. You know, there are some projects that might get a lot of hype that I might be like, nah, I'm not, I'm not really feeling it, right? So... That's what I bring for you guys. Also, we're going to get some, maybe some NFT sprinkles. Everyone loves some NFT sprinkles, so I'm, I'm waiting to see what he means by that. 
Um, hopefully some maybe like NFT boosters or something of that nature. We'll have to wait and see. So that is all what is coming and we haven't even begun yet is what he says. So let's go over to the chart. We're seeing a little bit of a pullback uh, right about now, which I think is okay. We've seen this constant run up except for here. We saw a nice downfall. You know, we saw a nice little pullback again. We went a shot back up, saw a nice little pullback again, kind of consolidated and then took off. I think we might see, you know, we already saw a pullback. I think we might see a con consolidation maybe down to the $21, $22 level and maybe go back up to all-time highs at like $30 to $35. But the price action, this chart is beautiful. This is a textbook, you know, uptrend. I'm loving it. I like what I'm seeing here. It's been out since February uh or I'm sorry, January 15th. So been been out for a little over a month and I think they are doing phenomenal. Now let's pull up my Internet Explorer here, kind of see and break down what the first couple of treasury investments are, right? So we have quick swap pools on Polygon, ETH USDC, we got ETH Quick uh, Day ETH wrapped BTC to USDC, USDC to Quick, right? So all of these, um, they all have a different yearly APR and they are pretty safe, right? So I like that they were playing it safe. They pretty much invested $17,500 on average into all these different, um, different, you know, farms and yields. Uh, so I like that. It's very minuscule. Right, so it's the yearly returns on these are not like phenomenal, but they're stable, they're easy, they get back the money, and I think that's that's all that matters. You know, having something that's sustainable and something that is pretty pretty safe and pretty mod um pretty like minimal risk tolerance is important for a treasury, right? So total treasury address is 400,000. They even have a treasury address here so you guys can look it up for yourselves. Um, then they also have on Curve, uh, which is Polygon, they have triple. So they have day USDC to USDT. That's only 6% yearly APY. They put $100,000 into that. It's only gonna be making six grand a year. But I feel like that's gonna be really really stable um and i think that that apy is not going to fluctuate whatsoever um then they have five here um for 20 percent apy twenty five thousand in that for a five thousand dollar yearly expected return all of these are subject to change and they are all invested in it looks like they will be making their money back um but they invested about 47.04 uh, percent they got one hundred and eighty eight thousand one hundred and forty dollars and twenty cents on a yearly expected return so close to two hundred thousand dollars on just these initial um it looks like we got 12 13 14 uh 15 yeah, i probably counted that wrong 12 13 14 15 16 16 different um investments i really like the strong nodes especially if the price begins to go back up so i think this was a great investment especially with strong chain you guys should go down below and check out my strong chain um and the the light paper that i read over for strong block that just came out so that's all fine and dandy i'm loving this for you know only being out a month and a half i think these are all great things are in the moving in the right direction right so they say they pretty much go over what a treasury is and all of that i recommend that you guys read all of this for yourselves i'm going to leave it down below for you guys to check it out along with the treasury uh, google spreadsheet but I, I recommend you guys read this. At the, you know, do your own research. You know, don't just listen to me and be like, "Oh, that looks like a great project. I'm going to go invest in it." Make sure it fits your needs. See if you guys get a gut feeling like, mm, "Not sure, not feeling this." You know, make sure you follow your own gut. Do your own research, right? So pretty much, we're going to have governance, kind of like a DAO had uh, with snapshots, and we can kind of vote upon where the treasury money is going to be going. Votes proportional to token amount mean that larger holders and whales who will be more affected by the proposed changes benefit from more voting power. This is all pretty much the same, right? The Cuba treasury grows every time a node is minted and decreases when it's allocated to an investment. Pretty straightforward. Specifically, 90% of day from node revenue currently goes to the treasury so they don't take it as cubo i like how they take it as a stable coin and this will continue until the treasury hits between one 
to two million, and then it will reduce to fifty percent for treasury accum- uh, accu- accumulation. <laughs> um, we know that many projects acquire extra funds through buy and sell taxes, but we don't plan to in- implement that. That's pretty key here. They don't plan on having buy or sell taxes. Very interesting. You know, a lot of people would say, "Well, how is that sustainable?" You know, like I said, go read my. Uh, go read, go listen to my other video, my first ever video on Cubo um, protocol, so you guys can kind of understand why they don't need the buys and sells. <clears throat> to begin with, we only hold uh, the stablecoin because it's one half of the Cubo um, liquidity pair and saves some extra transactions happening on both ends. It's also available on Coin uh, Coinbase, which makes it easier for you know the DeFi newbies that are coming over. Um, also, we have 400,000 in the stablecoin, which is awesome to see. They also said that maybe they would get some, you know, different uh, farm yields and some other NFTs to throw into the, the treasury, which I think is all great. Um, we expected the yield um, and maybe some NFTs that can be farmed for yield, right? So I think that's all fine and dandy and great to see. Our pri- priority is to utilize the treasury as efficiently and safely as possible. So, like I said, all of these seem pretty safe for the most part. The USDC to quick, that's the highest one. It's probably the most unstable. Um, but pretty much they're going for safety first, right? We're mainly looking at quick swap pools and stable coin yield farming. They work well in both bull and bear markets, plus they're relatively low risk as far as DeFi is concerned, right, for DeFi. Um, the APR is stable, and there is always a requirement for liquidity pools to be filled. QuickSwap, an automated market maker, can only function with the liquidity provided by LP depositors. So that's pretty important. They obviously believe in QuickSwap. We don't want to limit ourselves to Polygon's ecosystem. They eventually want to go to Avalanche and Phantom because they're showing sh- uh, strengths in the recent uh, months, which I think is awesome. I think that's very important. I completely agree with that. Trader Joe and Spooky Swaps LPs look interesting, but we're also on the lookout for other NAS nodes that are service, like they did with Strongbox, where they invested 14 nodes pro- protocols that exhibit the right characteristics of success, like Strongblock, which is why they invested. So. I'm really like bullish on this, you know, half right here. I think this is this is great. I like that they want to branch out, get diversification within the treasury, and I also like that they're going to go into the nodes because I think nodes are not going anywhere. And as long as you get in the right protocol, you will be making money. I cover a lot of different nodes. Check out my channel. Check out my videos, guys. I cover a lot of different node protocols, and it is not stopping anytime soon. These investments won't make up the bulk of the treasury's deployment for fear of building a house of cards upon the node ecosystem, but some limited exposure can be beneficial for both enterprises, especially if we catch them early enough. Splitting up our treasury allocation between multiple chains is a great way to diversify and limit downside risk in case of exploits or hacks. If blue chip cryptos rebound, we might think about stacking some for a rainy day. It wouldn't hurt to hold BTC when the ETF approval goes through. I completely agree with that. I, th- I think that's great. I think that you should hold and hodl some like BTC, some Avalanche, some Phantom, some Ethereum, BNB. I think that's very important. And in the long term, that could benefit the protocol. Bruno mentioned the buyback bot and what benefit it will bring to Cubo. In our last medium post, we talked about selling pressure, having a soft cap as a result of liquidity nodes being minted. The steepest sell-off in Cubo was a direct result of private sale and day one buyers pulling profit at 5 bucks. And since then, it's been a steady grind upwards to $30, as you guys saw. What if we could compound that movement? We want to boost the price action even more by using some revenue to buy back Cubo. I think that's great. I think buybacks are always amazing. And what they have already set and forth, go read the docs, do your own research, is great. And they kind of cover that a little bit here. The first one, the first bot, it's mentioned in the Git book, will deploy a maximum of 10% of the treasury if the market price of Cubo has been down significantly for multiple hours at a time or dumps over 20%. Bot number two, so a second bot that they want to implement, will create a. Uh, um, I'm. I know I'm gonna fucking botch this, right? <laughs> Cyclical. Comment down below how horrible I am at reading. 
I sucked at English. I'm horrible at reading, but I'm good at interpreting. Please, just, you can bully me down below. I'm, that's fine. Just do it. it. I'm giving you full props. Just go down below. You guys can quote whatever. Tweet at me with different gifts. I'm, I'm okay with it. Uh, momentum using treasury yield from node revenues to buy back Cubo and send it to the rewards pool. It's another notch in our belt to allow investors the freedom to sell as many tokens as they want every day without destroying the price. This is great. They are encouraging, encouraging you to take profits, right? I think that's awesome. It kind of follows what Thor is doing. Thor doesn't want to penalize or penalize, you know, people from taking profits. That's your money. You earned it. You should be able to take profit. So I think that's all great. And I, I really like that Cubo is following that route. So that's pretty much all that they have for this medium article i wanted to make a video i said this was going to be quick it's already 16 minutes long pretty much so that is it for this video i'm going to continue to do updates on certain node protocols uh, i have a lot of videos planned i just don't have a, a bunch of time uh, but the weekend's coming up so i should have more time to make more videos for you guys i will see you guys in the next one peace out